So, where do the Foo Fighters go from here? And will we hear from them in the near future? Buckle up guys, this could be a heavy one. Welcome to the video guys, and for you hardcore subscribers, welcome back. Hi mum. Now I haven't made a video in a while, long story short, I've had some laptop issues, more about that in an upcoming video worth sharing with you guys. Now onto the Foo Fighters, worth me summarising what's been happening over the past few months. Now it's been about six weeks since Taylor Hawkins was found unconscious in his hotel room in the Four Seasons in Bogota, Colombia on the 25th of March earlier this year. The Foo Fighters were due to headline Lollapalooza Festival just a few days shortly after on the Sunday. According to a toxicology report released by Colombia's Attorney General, Taylor had up to 10 different substances in his body at the time of death and these included marijuana, opioids and tricyclic antidepressants. Now, although many people will no doubt view the way in which she passed as a quintessentially rock and roll way to die, what's incredibly sad for me is that in 2001, when he overdosed on heroin in London as part of another Foo Fighters tour that left him in a coma for two weeks, it sounds like he's never really been able to get over his addiction with substance abuse. It sounds like it's been a constant battle for him since that period. Taylor's tragic death occurred during the first leg of what would have been a global stadium tour of Foo Fighters' 10th studio album, Medicine at Midnight. They were due to come to Europe shortly after for a string of stadium shows, one of which was in the London Stadium on the 25th of June, the one I had tickets for. I was so looking forward to seeing that show. Shortly after Taylor's death, tributes poured in from around the world from music royalty, including Liam Gallagher, Elton John, Miley Cyrus, Metallica, and many, many more. The Foo Fighters wrote on their Instagram page, the Foo Fighters family is devastated by the tragic and untimely loss of our beloved Taylor Hawkins. His musical spirit and infectious laughter will live on with all of us forever. Our hearts go out to his wife, children, and family and we ask that their privacy be treated with the utmost respect in this unimaginably difficult time. And for me, Taylor leaves behind him a rich and unbeatable legacy, glittered with moments of drumming prowess and musical genius. He is without a doubt one of the greatest rock drummers that's ever lived, and probably at the time of his death, the best drummer on the planet. Now, I didn't really feel like it was right to make a video about Taylor during the week of his death. Something about that just felt disrespectful and just not right in the moment. His death is pretty personal to me, to be honest. I've kind of watched Taylor grow as an artist on TV, live, in interviews, ever since I worked at How to Use My Family's Computer. You know, I've probably been following the foods for the best part of 15 to 20 years. And I don't know about you, but I find it pretty difficult to connect with modern day musicians, especially in the rock space. Maybe it's a sign that I'm getting old or something, but there are several bands out there that I listen to but don't really kind of resonate with me. There's nothing that they stand for that I can really buy into. But Taylor and the Foos were ones that did. Taylor's been quoted many times in interviews saying something along the lines of playing in the Foos is one of the purest forms of enjoyment for him. And in many ways, he would die for the band. And I think that he kind of did. Now, in my opinion, Studio 666, the new Foos film, is probably the best thing that Taylor could have done as a final hurrah. Dave even said in an interview that Taylor didn't even read the script. He kind of just was himself. He made it up as he went along and tried to do the best version of him. And his personality just shines through so much in that film. Such a great final lasting memory for hardcore Foos fans. And I'll leave the link somewhere to the review video I did for that film. But I guess now that a good chunk of time has passed, the dust has definitely now settled on that mainstream media coverage of Taylor's death. I just can't stop thinking now, what next for the Foo Fighters? When will we next hear from them? And will we hear from them again? Well, on the 29th of March, the Foos basically told everyone that they were going away for a while. On their Instagram page, they wrote, It is with great sadness that the Foo Fighters confirmed the cancellation of all upcoming tour dates in light of the staggering loss of our brother Taylor Hawkins. We're sorry for and share in the disappointment that we won't be seeing one another as planned. Instead, let's take this time to grieve, to heal and to pull our loved ones close and to appreciate all the music and memories we've made together. We'd love the Foo Fighters. Now, shortly after that, there was the Grammys and the Foos didn't make an appearance despite them being up for three awards. And to be honest, I don't think we're going to see them in the public eye anytime soon. Now, I'm just going to come out and say this, to be honest. I think Dave is going to have a really difficult time getting over this. And I'm not sure he ever will. How unlucky does this man have to be, really, to be honest? First, you've got the death of Kurt Cobain from the band Nirvana, which almost stopped him playing music forever. 
and now you've got his best friend. Lightning really can strike twice, it seems. Now, after Kurt died, Dave has been quoted several times in interviews saying that he just didn't want to play music ever again. At that time, he even turned down several offers from other famous bands to join as a drummer because that would remind him too much of Nirvana and the passing of Kurt Cobain. Now, if I was to milk a positive out of this pretty dark situation, I'd say that the difference with Taylor's passing is it's at a time where Dave is older, much wiser, and he's been through some shit. To an extent, the whole band has been through something similar before, and you'd pray that they can now cope with that better. So that gives me one glimmer of hope that the Foos will one day take to the stage again, but only time will tell. I've mentioned in my Liam Gallagher video, which I'll link up there somewhere, how important these rock and roll torchbearers are, and even how if they continue to release garbage and crap albums, crap songs, etc., we'll still support them and follow them because they'll be missed and they won't be around forever. It's these kind of artists that when they stop making music, you kind of really notice it. The emerging sort of talent pipeline of rock bands just isn't really a healthy one. There's no one that is intriguing or exciting that I think can pick up that mantle, run with that torch. Put it this way, the Foo Fighters could make a K-pop album tomorrow and I'd go and buy it and I'd book a seat on their tour. Because with these bands, you're not just in it for the music or the odd single. You're in it for life because you've followed them for so many years. It's a little bit like following a football team, to be honest. And I personally don't feel that allegiance or connection with a lot of modern day bands. But enough about what I think. Let me know what you think. Do you think this is the last we've seen of the Foo Fighters? Or do you think they'll rise again? Leave a comment down below, let me know. And with that, I guess I'll see you in the next video, which will be a much more cheery instalment than this video. But this one needed to be made in a bit.